Welcome to Forecast Lab. As some of you are aware, I was not able to do the Christmas video yesterday. The Christmas dinner was late, and then somebody brought out a box of wine, and I think you know how that goes. So instead, we're going to bring you this Thursday edition of the show. There's the surface map for this afternoon. A bit of a reprieve on the East Coast. Temperatures starting to warm up in the Northeast. In the central U.S., strong, warm advection from the Gulf Coast all the way into the Midwest and up to Minnesota and Manitoba and Ontario. So we've got this large area of fog due to that relatively warm and moist air passing over cooler ground. In the western states, a Pacific frontal system moving through Wyoming and Colorado, and yet another one lurking off of the coast of Oregon. Checking out the 500 millibar chart, a strong trough moving through Oklahoma and Texas that is producing some severe weather in southeast Texas this afternoon. Some indication of long wave troughing in the western U.S. and a fairly large ridge across the east coast and Quebec. This evening, we do see an atmospheric river set up across southeast Texas into Arkansas that will rapidly translate to the east during the overnight hours and into Alabama for tomorrow morning. Then a bit of a reprieve for Friday and then going into Saturday, it recharges once again, and we are looking at the possibility of severe weather in the southeast for Saturday. Across the northeastern U.S., a fairly quiet day underneath high pressure. Highs today were in the 20s and 30s, with 40s from Philadelphia down into Virginia. In the Great Lakes, highs were in the 30s and 40s, and we saw some 50s in the Ohio River Valley. Chicago was expecting 46, and Cincinnati looking at 53 for today. A cool day in the southeastern U.S., although... Severe weather is approaching from the west. Highs today ranged from the 50s in the Piedmont region to the 60s on the Gulf Coast and, of course, 70s in the Florida Peninsula. For Texas, strong thunderstorms developing around Dallas, Waco, and Temple and expanding into the Houston, Lufkin, and Texarkana area. The Storm Prediction Center has this enhanced risk around Houston, Lufkin, and Beaumont. That includes all hazards, possibility of scattered tornadoes, some hail, and strong downburst winds. However, no strong tornadoes expected. Currently, we do have a tornado watch extending from south of Shreveport to south of Tyler that goes all the way down to College Station and Houston. And a severe weather watch for the Arklatex. Not really seeing much going on there at the present time. A lot of this convection starting to clear out as it moves towards the east. There's a closer look at those severe thunderstorm watches. And as we go north, we pick up a few flash flood warnings around the bottom area. And then we've got this large, dense fog advisory for tonight across much of Oklahoma. It goes all the way into Kansas and covers a huge swath of the lower plains. And that's because we have a warm-up going on. We have warm advection bringing up moisture across this very cool ground. And as a result, we do get fog formation. The dense fog advisory includes numerous cities. Minneapolis, Duluth, Milwaukee, Madison, Waukegan, the Quad Cities, Des Moines, Omaha, North Platte, Wichita, Dodge City. So it is going to be kind of a difficult driving night on some of the interstates, especially Interstate 80. Looking at the southwestern U.S., a shortwave disturbance crossing Arizona, Utah, and the Four Corners. And further to the west, a speed max across Nevada. That's going to be the configuration on the 500 millibar heights and vorticity, the main wave right there in New Mexico, Arizona. So this represents some eastward movement during the afternoon. And back here is the speed max, strong winds coming in from the Pacific. And of course, in Texas, there's that strong upper level trough across northeast Texas. And that disturbance, as it enters the base of that long wave trough, it does dig and intensify. 
So there could be some effects there in Texas, although the air mass will be dried out somewhat. And numerous advisories all through the Great Basin and Rockies. We've got winter storm warnings in the mountains of Colorado, winter weather advisories around Breckenridge down towards Trinidad and Buena Vista. Winter storm warnings in the Wasatch Range up to southeastern Idaho. We could see anywhere from one to three feet in some of the more vulnerable areas of the mountains there. But as you can see, not much coverage into the city of Salt Lake City itself. Winter weather advisories further back along Interstate 80 towards Austin and the central regions of Nevada could see up to about 10 inches of snow there. And we pick up winter weather advisories in the mountains of the Sierras, looking at about 4 to 12 inches of snow, mostly above 6,500 feet. So those are some rather high snowfall levels. We do have wind advisories in the southern Antelope Valley into the coastal range around Santa Barbara could see winds up to 45 miles an hour. I think that expired earlier today, but they reposted that for tomorrow. And in the northwestern U.S., I certainly can't go through all of this, but we're focusing on the winter storm warnings in the Cascades, northern Oregon, into Washington, expecting about 4 to 10 inches of snow there. Could be 1 to 2 feet above 5,000 feet, the snow levels, running about 3,500 to 4,000 feet. Also got wind advisories around Spokane, down into the Dalles, and in the southwest part of Idaho, and numerous winter storm warnings southeastern Idaho, extending down into the Wasatch Range. And there's your satellite imagery, quite complex. We see high clouds across the Rockies, another band of high clouds linked up with that speed max across Nevada. And then we get into mid and lower level layers. And you can pick that out a little bit better with the moisture channel. And there you can see the structure better, a vortex across northern Washington, kind of a subsident area, kind of a dry slot right there, but it is being overspread from the west. So where is this speed max? Well, that's going to be over Medford this evening, 160 to 170 knots extending into Nevada, but it does weaken as it moves inland. Another speed max moving into Idaho for tomorrow night, and that weakens as well. However, still 110 knot winds spilling out into Colorado and Wyoming. And we go into the weekend Continuation of very strong flow across the southwestern U.S., so continued active weather for the next several days in the western states, and gradually some of that activity moves out into the central plains for next week. All right, so let's head out into the Pacific. Pacific system lurking well off of the Oregon coast. We go up to British Columbia. They do have rainfall warnings at least earlier today, they had them up to two inches of rain were expected. And we go up to Alaska, not really a whole lot going on. Winter weather advisory in extreme southwestern Alaska expiring this morning for blowing snow, 35 mile an hour winds and freezing spray warnings along the coast. Some bitterly cold air on the north slope, but not much of it coming into the interior. Temperature still above zero. Currently in the Canadian Arctic, not really all that cold. Temperatures about minus 10 to zero on average. So not really much Arctic air on tap right now. Most of that's going to be in northern Alaska. In the Canadian prairies, looks mild. Temperatures rising to near freezing. Some freezing rain falling in western Ontario. And then going into eastern Canada, under the influence of this large high pressure area, quite cold temperatures in the teens this afternoon. What are the prospects for Arctic air development? Well, this is something we're watching pretty closely. Temperatures up in the Arctic actually looking rather mild right now, but we do see some indications as we get into the first week of January that things will flip flop and we will we'll start developing some of that serious Arctic air. And you can see that there's really not the pressure to push that south. Looking at 1040 on Baffin Island and that's about it. So even if we do get Arctic air up there, nothing really to carry that very far south. Part of that is due to the thickness of the 
cold air mass, just not really being all that thick. But as we go into the extended, we are building up to 1040 by next Monday. So that is significant, and temperatures falling into the orange, which is minus 30 to minus 40. So that is a critical value there. And we will start seeing some of that air push south. 1040 with very cold air like that, that's going to at least reach the Canadian prairies. And that does take some time, but it is over Manitoba by Thursday next week. And then we can see minus 30s to minus 40s really building in there in the Victoria Island, Baffin Island, Devon Island area, and also in the valleys of Yukon and northern Alaska also, some going on there. So anyway, that's about as far out as we can go up to the 4th, but it does look like some Arctic air is starting south. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that first and second week of January. Wow, that's that's very cold air up there in the eastern Arctic. Don't usually see those kinds of values out there between Thule and Resolute. Usually that bitterly cold air is found out in this region here. Okay, let's take a look at your forecast around the country, and you can focus on your favorite area. In the eastern U.S., going into Friday, it is going to be rainy in parts of the Ohio River Valley, the Corn Belt, and the Great Lakes as this system pulls to the northeast. Good chance of rain from Louisville to Chicago up to Minneapolis. The Storm Prediction Center does have a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms in southern Mississippi and southeast Alabama and parts of Louisiana near New Orleans. Isolated severe weather is a possibility. Freezing rain possible in North Dakota and extensive rains once again in the Pacific Northwest. There is Friday night and there is Saturday. Rainy across the northeastern U.S. Even heavier rains in the Ohio River Valley as another system spreads to the east. The Storm Prediction Center does have an enhanced risk of severe weather across central Mississippi and northeastern Louisiana. There is a concern over scattered supercells. The tornado risk is not clear at this time. Snows expand into the northern Rockies. Snow levels about four to 5,000 feet. Rain in the valley floors and lower elevations. Then for Sunday, another strong Pacific weather system, one after the other. Moving into the Rockies, extensive snows across the northwestern U.S. and extensive rains all along the Atlantic coast, gradually exiting as dry, cold advection sweeps in. Then we go into Monday. This snowstorm expands onto the Great Plains. Most of that snow is going to be along and north of Interstate 80 in Nebraska to the south, possibly a rain and snow mix. Precipitation comes to an end out in the western U.S. Finally, a cold, large, high-pressure area expands into the northern Rockies and the Great Basin area and drives this front south into the Four Corners. And there's Tuesday, rain spreading into the Appalachians, the eastern Great Lakes, snow confined to very narrow areas in the western Great Lakes. Precipitation continues winding down in the west, but here's another system about to move in. Now with this next system, snow levels could be as low as 2,000 feet in the Great Basin area. You can see a little speck of snow right there around Spokane. Then we go into the remainder of the period. This looks rather cold for the first week of January. I think the models have not really settled on a final estimate of the thicknesses and temperatures. So we'll just kind of wait and see. And there's a second push of cold air coming in for Thursday and Friday. So we'll be interested to see how that pans out. This air mass, again, does not have much extent onto the high plains. So it's continuing that same broken record pattern of cold advection onto the lower plains and very little on the high plains. And the Pacific Storm Track continues to be active. There's another system heading into Colorado. And that's all we have for this edition of Forecast Lab. After the credits, the cross sections, and we will see you again tomorrow for the Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Take care and have a great Thursday night. Bye-bye.